Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. Got my CSG shirt on today that I won in an Instagram caption contest a few months ago. Before I get to the Black Swamp find, which is an awesome, epic attic find, uh, I did get a big, for me, TTM back this week. If you're following me on Instagram, you already saw this, but it's uh, Louis Tiant Rookie Card 1965 Tops. Not only is Tiant uh, here featured in my favorite vintage set, favorite vintage design, 1965, he was well known for his Red Sox career, which is of course my favorite, but I also believe that he's going into the Hall of Fame by the Veterans Committee, or at least I think he's got a really good chance in the next few years. So to have another rookie autograph come via TTM, really excited about that. Tiant, incidentally, lives in Maine on a golf course in Kennebunk. So that's cool. I'm also from Maine. One more card. I. Uh, I had a $10 credit with Whatnot, so I entered into a break, modern, ultra-modern baseball. I got this uh, Hyun Jin Ryu, I think is how it's pronounced. It's numbered to 350, that's the best I got. He has finished in the top three in the Cy Young, so he's not a nobody. But I, I got a, you know, typical break packet there. So let's talk about the Black Swamp Find. This is just an unbelievable attic find. And my favorite thing is attic finds. I've always, ever since I was a kid, dreamed of going up into somebody's attic and finding this amazing cache of cards. I think most collectors dream of that. It's one of the first things I did when I moved into this house 15 years ago was climb up into the attic and look around. There's nothing up there except squirrel poop. Uh, but when I was looking for houses, I also looked at really old houses and dreamed of buying the house and then going up into the attic and finding something amazing. Never happened. Of course, it's extraordinarily unlikely, but it did happen for Carl Kistner and 19 of his cousins. Uh, they were cleaning out their aunt's house and she had left in her will everything from her house and her money to 20 nieces and nephews. Uh, the, the house was actually previously owned by his aunt's father, so his grandfather. Um, so he passed away in the 1940s. He left everything to his daughter, Jean. Jean was a pack rat. Um, she passed away in 2011. She had owned the house and still had all of her dad's old belongings. She left a note in her will for her family that they'd find things in the house that they never knew existed. And so that really intrigued the family and they dug through the house literally for months. As I said, she was a pack rat and it took them a long, long time. And they finally got to the attic. The house, as I said, it took them forever to get through it. It seemed like it had never been cleaned. It was in shambles. It has since been torn down. Uh, I had a, found a picture of the nieces and nephews in front of the house and it is in shambles. And then a picture of the house as it's being torn down. So as they're going through the attic, one of the cousins finds a soot covered green cardboard box entombed underneath a dollhouse. And the dollhouse had been there on top of this box for decades, 80 years maybe, 70 years. Cause this happened in 2012, by the way. Or, uh, yeah, so early 2012. It was February 2012 when they finally opened this box. Uh, the Inside this box is about 700 very, very old cards wrapped with twine. And experts believe, after inspecting it, that the twine was actually uh, wrapped around it by the original manufacturer. And Carl Hench, the grandfather, just never opened them. So Carl Kistner, the nephew of the aunt, when he finally opened the box, or when he finally examined what was inside the box, weeks later, weeks after opening it originally, he was in his restaurant. He owned a restaurant. He was in his office in the restaurant. And he opened it and started looking through them and started recognizing names like Honus Wagner, uh, Ty Cobb, Christy Mathewson, and started realizing, oh man, these cards are 100 years old and they might be worth something. He had no idea how much they were worth, but 
This is when he immediately walked over to the bank and put them in the bank vault. So the family believes that the older Carl uh, obtained these cards when he owned a meat market in town in, in Defiance, Ohio. And in that meat market, he also sold candies. And there was a candy company right there called Defiance Candy Company right nearby. And they believe that this Defiance Candy Company brought him promotional items that included baseball cards for him to give away to people who came into his shop. They believe that he did give some away, but he stashed some away, luckily for this family, for decades. PSA says that this is one of the most rare and coveted sets in history. There are 30 players in the set, 17 Hall of Famers today. There are four color variations. There's green, blue, orange, and red. There's an error in this. So Cy Young, the card labeled Cy Young, is actually uh, White Sox Southpaw Irv Young. Cy Young was a righty, but they have a guy who's clearly a lefty, and it's Irv Young, not Cy Young. Before this black swamp find, there were only a few in existence. Uh, PSA at the time had only, only graded 623, and this, so this more than doubled how many were, in, were known to exist. Uh, interestingly, I found a message board from, I think, August of 2012, where people were discussing, some of them were skeptical of this find, that these were legitimate cards, even though they'd been graded by PSA. Uh, one person said in this message board that they would rather own a well-traveled PSA 5 or 6 than a PSA 9 that looks like it had been inserted in a Topps T206 pack a few years before. I got thinking about that, and I'm curious what your thoughts are. Would you rather have one that appears to be vintage or a much more valuable card that looks new but has been authenticated as a century-old card? I get the argument if you're a collector, but if you're a collector, you also want your, your uh, cards to be worth as much as possible. So would you, not everybody, of course, I'm curious if what your thoughts are. Would you rather have the one that appears to be vintage or the one that really is vintage but looks newer and is worth a lot more money? Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested in, in this debate. So this is the E98 set. I, I think I forgot to mention this. E98, the manufacturer's name is lost to history. Nobody knows who actually manufactured these cards or even if Defiance Candy Company is the company that gave them out. It's believed that that's the case, but uh, nobody really knows for sure. This Black Swamp find brought in 16 Ty Cobb PSA 9s. Before this, the best Cobb was a 7. Think about that. Before this, the best PSA Wagner was a 5. This one included a 10, a PSA 10 Hannes Wagner. Pretty good. Pretty amazing. Uh, Carl Kistner said, it's like finding the Mona Lisa in an attic. I thought that was a great quote. He also said, once I realized what we had, I couldn't sleep until I had them in a safe place. And that's when he put them in the bank vault. Uh, I have always wondered when something like this happens, how do, do they go in and verify the story? And it turns out they did. Heritage Auctions worked a lot, apparently, to verify the family history the meat market existed, their grandfather owned it, that they had owned this house all this time. So that, I think, is one of those services that an auction house has to do and should do, and that's why you pay that buyer's premium, I guess. Uh, I, I just, I, th I find that interesting. That's something, that's the type of job I'd be interested in having, is just validating wild stories like this. So this family hoped to sell the best 37 cards right away, and they wanted to spread out the rest over several years so as to not flood the market. I don't know if that's smart. I mean, can you flood the market with 700 cards? Maybe. I don't know. Um, so those 37 were expected to, to fetch $500,000. It brought in 566000 at auction. So a little better than they expected. The PSA 10 Wagner went for $239,000. So almost half of it, just from one card. The overall... Uh, so they were expected to fetch $3 million for the whole lot. They ended up selling just a partial lot for $1.8 million at auction, and then split up the rest of the cards evenly among the 20 nieces and nephews. There is also a near set, uh, fully graded, 
very highly by SGC. Uh, nines, nine and a halfs, tens. So this isn't just a PSA giving amazing grades. SGC did the same thing. There is an episode of Strange Inheritance, which is a show I'd never heard of before, but can be found online. Strange Inheritance with an episode about this find. And I'm interested in autographs. There is one card that PSA has authenticated with an autograph. It's for Jack Coombs. Um, I, I didn't find any times where it ever sold. I didn't find an image of it. So obviously probably sitting in somebody's collection somewhere, which is awesome rather than just continuously going up on the market all the time. Uh, Jack Coombs was a pretty good pitcher in his career. All right, that's it for today. I'm hoping to go to a Celtics game Wednesday night, so my week schedule is going to be a little bit off if that happens. I might put out another video tomorrow. We'll see if I have time. Thanks very much for watching. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I appreciate it.